Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Three tips here. And it's been almost 24 hours since we placed these silver cells in operation. And uh, we're gonna look down in here and see exactly what we got going on inside these cells now. Silver cell number one seems to have consumed a lot more of the impure silver than number two did. And the current flow is higher on silver cell number one than it is on number two. Let's look down in here and see exactly what we got going on down inside this cell right now. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful pure silver crystal. Let's have a look down inside of cell number two. That don't look too bad either. But it's quite obvious that cell number two has not uh, consumed as much impure silver as cell number one has. All right, let's look down inside the beast. Oh yeah, look at that, man. That is beautiful. The difference between the amount of silver that's left in these uh, anode filter baskets is quite a lot of difference between these two. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Of course, the current flow goes to zero when I do that. And now we're gonna add some additional silver in here. Two big spoons to fill that thing back up. Here's another one. Since it's going so fast, I'll put this back on the uh, silver. And now you can see the current flow is up to 2.6 amps. Cell number two. We'll add a little bit of uh, impure silver into cell number two as well. not half as much as we put in cell number one. Cell number one is consuming the silver much faster than cell number two. And you can see here the current flow is what does the work. And since we have a higher current flow in cell number one, we're consuming the silver faster than we are in cell number two. I did a couple things different uh, between cell one and cell two. In cell two, I used this uh, Craftsman Dacron filter bag, and it's much thicker material than the universal bag that I used in silver cell number one. And I had a devil of a time trying to get that retainer ring down over the anode basket with this thicker material. So I went with the thinner material in this universal bag, and I was able to get the uh, retainer ring on there very easily. But now that may have had an effect on how the uh, silver ions that dissolve in the anode filter basket travel into the electrolyte and played out on the inside of the cathode. Another thing I did different was I made a brand new strap for silver cell number one out of copper. And I used an existing strap for silver cell number two. I mean, it's still made out of copper, but it's got a patina on it that could be insulating and creating a higher resistance. And that could have something to do with why these two silver cells are operating so differently. We're gonna do an experiment. This is one last look at the readings between cell number one and cell number two. And so what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna secure the power supply. Let's see here. Boom, on cell number two. 
and we're going to take the anode basket out of here. I've prepared another anode basket with the thinner filter. This one has the thick filter in it. But before we take this out, let me go ahead and charge this up with some pure silver crystal. I mean some, uh, charge this up with some impure silver shot. And now what we'll do is take this, this one out of here. And now we're gonna reinstall the altered one here with the thinner filter in it. And place the anode electrode bar back on. Now I've got the anode filter with the thin Dacron filter in the cell. Let's turn the power supply on and see if we notice a difference here. Boom. We went from 170 up to 230. 2.4 amps, say, and rising because as the uh, electrolyte seeps into here, makes contact with the uh, silver, then the uh, conductivity is going to increase. That thing's still rising. So that thinner bag definitely made a difference. Now we're going to go in here and give these a stir. It's always a good idea to stir these things up whenever we get in here to look at them. Someone had uh, asked about whether or not the electrolyte is heavy or what the density of it was. So what I'm going to do is measure out one liter of this electrolyte in a beaker. Now we're going to measure out one liter of distilled water in another beaker. water okay to be totally accurate I should have measured the empty weight of each beaker but this should be enough to give us an idea of uh, the different density between the distilled water number two. Let's put that on the scale here. That's 1265.6. We're right down, right up here. 1265.6. Now, let's measure the uh, electrolyte. That's 17. 84.8, or right that up here, 17, 84.8. Well, this isn't totally and completely accurate because I don't know exactly how much silver I have in here. It's about 600 grams per liter in the electrolyte. And this is pure water. 
and the difference between those two is almost uh, 500 grams, half a kilo, between these two liquids. This one doesn't have any silver in it, just distilled water. This is our electrolyte with approximately 600 grams per liter in that solution. It's been about 22 hours since I placed these silver cells in operation and uh, they're moving along nicely. And the big deal here is changing out that anode filter in cell number two has made a big difference in the current flow. And I could probably make up the rest of it by installing a new uh, cathode connection back here on cell number two. But I think we're okay, just like we are. Uh, I, can, I think you can see right there, the difference between those two now has uh, narrowed a lot. So I guess this will conclude the silver cell experimentation and update video. Thank you for watching.